Ragnarok mug, and this is still Speedrun Ragnarok 2023. Um, I'm joined next by Alice Rujasu. We're playing a showcase of three shareware games. Before we get started, I just wanted to update y'all on a couple things. Um, first off, the incentive for for shareware is that choosing that color scheme. Like I said, the hot dog stand color scheme is in the lead, but Alice let me know that since we're playing three games, we can always pivot in the middle. So if you all wanna get in any last minute donations to get the color scheme changed for one of the latter games, feel free to do so now. And a bit further down the line, we've still got the incentive active to name the hero in Quest for Glory. That's coming up in just over an hour, about an hour and a half. So definitely get those in. There's not been any money down on those names. So this is your chance to, for a low, low price, choose the name of this hero. And of course, Bear is one of the options. Um, the last thing I wanted to say before we got going is, you know, the last few games we played, Zelda, Lena's, had our players collecting lots of different items. And um, you have a chance to collect some fun items of your own. We've got an expanded merchandise collection for Speed on Ragnarok this year. So in addition to the t-shirts, hoodies, long sleeve shirts featuring that Speedrun Ragnarok logo, we have a few new items this year, more shirts, tote bags, cute things like that featuring a brand new logo that is super cute as well. Please put exclamation mark merch in the chat um, to see all those great options. Um, with that, anyway, back to the game. Like I said, we've got Alice with us. Please go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, let us know what we're looking at here, <laughs> what's about to happen. Yeah, so, uh, hello, I'm Alice Rujasu, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be show showcasing some shareware for Windows 3.1, which is uh, the operating system that yeah, you might have used if you were around in the early 90s. Um, so we said uh, Hot Dog Stand is in the lead right now? That it is. Okay, so enjoy Hot Dog Stand, everyone. Um, if you would like to have something that is a little less offensive to your eyes, uh, you know, donate, and there are some schemes that are a little, you know, less red. But, um, so we have, uh, we have three, three games here that are shareware or scareware, depending on your, your thoughts toward them. Um, the first one here is going to be Jewel Thief. Uh, this is a game that if you bought a shareware CD or went on a shareware website, you probably saw this along the way. So, as the name implies, this is a game where you are a Jewel Thief. Um, I'm going to be starting this game, so let's say time starts now. So, you're, a, you're this little icon here and you're trying to avoid the other icons and collect the little jewels here. Um, there's some backstory, uh, if you read the manual, about like trying to collect the jewels for museums or something. It's, don't worry about it. You're a jewel thief, that's all you need to know. Um, and this artwork is, of course, fantastic and wonderful and perfect. Um, but yeah, you just don't want to get touched by any of these, like, boats or bats or, um, anything. By the way, the next level is going to be spiders in just a second here, so if you don't want to see that, uh, look away now. Uh, we got some spiders. Uh, so, if you, so if you get attacked, you lose a life. And you have nine lives, which seems pretty generous, but the problem is... Like, there's no iframes or anything, so you can just get hit for, like, six lives at once, and the game just kind of has no mercy on you. Um, you can look back, there's no more spiders. Um, so, the, you know, the game gets progressively harder, there are more, uh, things on screen trying to kill you. Um, one, so a couple of things I have found to make this, uh, a, this jerk of a game a little easier. You want to be on the, on the, like, the later version of Jewel Thief, which is version 1.4. 1.4 lets you take your cursor outside the game window, and that lets you kind of cheat a little bit, and, 
Um, just kind of wait for things to get out of the way. The other thing, uh, which I'll hopefully be showing off in a bit here, is you can pause the game by pressing the F3 button, and you can kind of exploit that. So we have the hardest level in the game coming up here, and I'm going to abuse F3 quite a bit here. So I'm going to pause with F3 and just kind of put my cursor here and just wait for an opening. Now. So, this level's normally, like, impossibly hard, but with F3, I have a chance. I still, like, may or may not beat it, but uh, I have a pretty good shot. Nope. See, like I said, it's you can get hit once, and you get hit for, like, six shots. Uh, so that's the last level of the game. It's hard. Uh, we're going to take one more shot at this, and if I don't get it, we're just going to move. So here we are at the easy levels again. Um, not too much to say about them that I didn't already say. Um, if you have anything you'd like to uh, talk about, uh, please go right ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I already plugged to you about getting in your donations for these incentives. I talked to you about sending us your money for t-shirts and whatnot, but I probably ought to remind you, of course, what all that money is for. Um, of course, this year, as in the past, we're supporting Take This, which, as Fighters. you likely have heard by now, is for reducing stigma around mental health support and providing resources for those who are in need. Um, and what's best about it is that it's cutely um, video game themed, as we've just seen exactly the Take This reference, both, of course, in Zelda, where it was made, and we saw it in Lena's again, too. Yep, no more spiders. Um, yeah, uh, Take This is awesome, and I'm very happy to be, uh, uh, you know, part of an event that is benefiting them once again. Um, they have been super cool. And, yeah, mental health is important. Um, you know, uh, taking care of yourself and, you know, keeping that in mind is, is very important. I know they have some good resources on their website and uh, they do a great job with those AFK rooms. Um, yeah, super cool. And, uh, oh, and of course, you can find out more by putting exclamation mark, take this in the chat. Yes, definitely do that. Okay, final level again. You totally got this. All right. Yeah, we got this. Maybe. Uh, the, these raindrops here are such jerks. It's funny that with all the things in this game, the scariest thing is the raindrops. In front of this, like, cutesy, like, rainbow, too. Yeah, I know. I, like, I love... We love rainbows. It's Rainbows are great. But yet the rainbow level in this is, like, the most evil. I don't understand it. I think maybe we got this. I don't... If it doesn't decide to be a jerk, like, right at the end here. Um, so there will be one more phase of this. But this phase is easier than the raindrop phase. The clouds are not as bad, so we should be able to clear this. I just have to be a little bit patient. Just taking my time here. All right, we got it. Uh, we beat it. Um, I could uh, show off the expert real quick. Um, but I'm just gonna like take a little stab at that and then move on. So yeah, nice. expert <laughs> just goes faster. Um, oh my gosh! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I can get through these early levels fine on expert, but then it's like you get to that rainbow level and it just becomes sadness. Yeah, that's gonna be a no for me. Oh my god, that's so <laughs> funny. And 
and then this uh, this spider level can be a jerk, even on easy difficulty, but especially on expert. Um, I could use pause strats here, but I think I'm just gonna wing it. Holy moly! I'm down to one life. <laughs> might not be it. This might not be the run here. Uh, I got it, but then I was in a bad place there. All right, so that was Jewel Thief. Um, hopefully you enjoyed Jewel Thief. Um, so this next game is one that you probably didn't see on a Shareware CD. Um, this one's a little more rare. Uh, this one's actually freeware. Um, but this is Sorcerer's Cave. And Sorcerer's Cave is actually a board game from, like, the late 1970s, I believe. Um, and it's kind of like this early kind of, like, d and d light type of thing, where you get to pick out some characters. You can be a hero, or an Amazon, or a priest, or... And you kind of create this party of... Uh, sort of adventurers. They don't level up or anything, but uh, they're just adventurers, and you can recruit people, and you can fight, and all that. So uh, you can start. You can kind of assign points to decide who you're going to start out with. I'm going to start out with an Amazon and a dog here that I have named Valkyrie and Doggo. So let's go. So I it's. Did wanna... Oh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, just wanted to say quickly at this time that as we're starting the second game, just to make sure that all your donations have time to process and whatnot, that let's put out a last call for any donations to change the color scheme here of Windows. If you, I don't know, I'm kind of a big fan of all this yellow, but hey, if you want to see it change, get that donation in now as I'll close it in about five minutes. Yeah, if, if you're looking for a, a different theme to set the to see. I might suggest pastel. I like pastel a lot. Um, but yeah, if you just want to see Hot Dog stand, then that's cool too. So, oh, we got a sword. Swords are good. Um, so this is kind of uh, like a really early procedurally generated game. Um, I mean, it, by the time the like this computer game came out, it wasn't that that early, because things like Rogue were out, but, like, the board game is, like, sort of a very early, uh, instance of a procedurally generated game, and, uh, like I said, you can, you can recruit things, you can collect treasure, um, there's not necessarily, like, an end goal to this game, but, you know, the name of the game is Sorcerer's Cave, and when I speedrun this, I... Like, my goal is to find and defeat the Sorcerer. Um, and sometimes you find the Sorcerer easily, sometimes you don't. So if I can't find a Sorcerer, then I will just try to get 500 points up here and then uh, escape the dungeon. Uh, so now I'm in a little bit of a bind here because I have a Spectre that I can't run away from, but I don't have any magic to fight it. So all I can do here is try to fight and just hope I survive. And I'm just gonna run away. Okay, well that didn't go too badly. What I'm generally trying to do here is just recruit as many friends as I can. Because, you know, the more the merrier. And you get points for having friends. And if you walk around the dungeon too long then you start to uh, run out of morale and everybody starts deserting you. So you're kind of you're kind of on a timer in this game. Uh, that's this like green meter over here. Once it gets into the red, you really want to um, you're really in trouble. You want to try to get out of the dungeon as soon as you can. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is a game that uh, I enjoy a lot. Um, it's, I think, kind of a hidden gem as far as uh, these early Windows games are concerned. Um, just, 
you know, like I said, everything's procedurally generated. Every game plays out a little differently. Um, I would love to have the actual board game. Um, it's a little hard to find and a little expensive, uh, so I don't have it yet. But yeah, uh, called Sorcerer's I'm a, I'm Cave. With yeah, go ahead. I'm I'm obsessed with these drawings of the characters. <laughs> yeah, this this is another game that the art the art in this game is is perfect and has absolutely no flaws. I will hear no slander against this artwork. No, I'm right there with you. Um, but yeah, this how game. Do you, I, I mean, do I? <laughs> how do you go about playing this game? Like on my Windows 10 today. Um. So it is freely available, and um, I believe it's 16 bit. So I think um, I'm not sure if the if the version out there is, can be played on a modern system or not. You might need like a virtual machine or something. Uh, the way I play it is I'm at, I'm just running Windows 3.1 within DOSBox, um, and that works pretty well for me. think about this a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to go. And, okay, well that worked out for me. Um, but yeah, you can play uh, you can play it on DOSBox uh, with Windows 3.1. You can play it on like Windows 95 or something like that. You might be able to play it on a like modern uh, Windows, I'm just not 100% sure about that. Uh, I haven't tried to because I don't actually uh, use Windows on my home computer. I'm a Linux person. Um, so DOSBox works great for this purpose. But uh, yeah, this game's absolutely free. You can just download it. Um, I've got my D&D game night tonight, but, you know, I might suggest to my girlfriends that we pivot and give this a try instead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, like, you know, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like a life-changing game or anything, but it's, you know, fun to play for a while. Um, and I think it's just an interesting experience. Um, so I am up to 500 points, so I am going to just kind of... Uh, head upstairs and uh, try to just escape the dungeon alive. Um, that's really all you're kind of going for in this game, just like, you know, uh, score more points. Like I said, there's not really, um, there's not really a specific goal in mind. Um, it's just try to get points and survive. Um, Beating the Sorcerer does give you 50 points, so that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty big boon. And like I said, there's, you know, just some kind of, uh, you know, the game's called Sorcerer's Cave, so you want to beat the Sorcerer. Uh, so I did get out of there with 500 points, but I'm going to take another stab at this here, uh, just to see if we can beat the Sorcerer, and, uh, win or lose, we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll to our final game here. Sounds good. I like that file name of your high score. No sorcerer, though. Did you, <laughs> did you not get the sorcerer that time? Yeah, I think I just, like, got a lot of points and uh, um, didn't find the sorcerer, so I just decided to call the, the high score that. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, you, you, there's traps where you can uh, fall down a level, and oh, this is awkward. So I can't go anywhere. I'm just kind of in this E shape here. Um, I think I have to e. just like reset here and try again. This is an E moment. Yeah, this is kind of you know it kind of has that. Um, this is really a pre roguelike, but. <laughs> it kind of has that that roguelike vibe of, you know, sometimes you get a really good run going, and then sometimes you just, like, die on the first level, because 
the RNG was mean to you. Um, this isn't good. My Valkyrie died, and I had just the Doggo. Um, yeah, yeah, your expedition ends in death. Um, so that happened. Um, well, that was a great run sponsored by the letter E. <laughs> Um, I guess we have time here for, like, one more before I move on to Cheese in Space, so, um, I will go ahead and do that. Um, feel free to jump in if you have anything, or, um, if we decide to change the color scheme at all. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, I did go ahead and close that bid war to change the color scheme just because I'd hate for anyone to donate and, and it processes and we miss it. So instead, any of your donations can go towards our game that's coming up in just over an hour to name the hero in Quest for Glory 1. Um, that's your next big thing coming up. But in the meantime, I will just, you know, we talked about incentives, we talked about merch, we talked about Take This, and the last thing I could tell you all about is the RPG Valkyries, of course. Um, which is an inclusive group of female femme gamers, speedrunners, um, primarily who love RPGs. And we've enjoyed so many of them um, just in the afternoon that I've been here with y'all. And here we are another with Sorcerer's Cave as well. Um, of course, if you want to spend more, some more time with us, hang out just outside of the marathon, you could put exclamation mark discord um, in the chat to join our discord. I've been with the Valkyries for, I mean, over three years now, it's amazing to think that this is my third speedrun Ragnarok at, I think, maybe fourth that, that I volunteered for or played in, um, and I just always feel so welcomed and included um, every time I work with them, and I really recommend y'all, if you're looking into getting into participating in marathons, be it playing a game yourself or volunteering in any capacity, that the Valks are a really great group to hang out with. Yeah, um, totally agree. Um, the Speedrun Ragnarok was one of the first, um, one of the first marathons that I saw, like, uh, many years ago. And then once I actually, you know, realized, like, hey, I can get involved in, um, speedrunning and marathons and all that, um, this was one of the first marathons that I got involved with and um, you know I've had a blast every time and you know they're all really awesome and yeah I appreciate uh, every time that they put on an event and it's it's always a lot of fun um, you you mentioned the uh, quest for glory run coming up which uh, is another game that um, I would have been playing around the time that uh, I was playing this one. And I highly recommend sticking around for that run. Uh, David is um, a very good uh, Quest for Glory player um, and a, an excellent person. And Quest for Glory 1 is just um, one of my favorite games. I'm really excited for that run. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it myself. Um, I was wondering, I know we're showcasing these games today, so it's not a fully, um, like, strict speedrun, but I was wondering, do people speedrun these games? Is there, like, an SRC leaderboard for any of these? Um, so there's, there's an SRC leaderboard for Sorcerer's Cave, and it's there because I created it, and I'm the only person on it, so, um, I gotta say, it's kind of lonely, um, if you want to get in on Sorcerer's Cave speedrunning, uh, you know, check it out. Um, you can be the, the number one or number two uh, Sorcerer's Cave runner in the world uh, if you want to be. Um, but yeah, I, I think the, you know, kind of quote-unquote world record that I set for this uh, is just like around two minutes. I don't remember exactly what the time was, but uh, something along those lines. Um, it's, you know, if you get a good run and like find the sorcerer right away, uh, it's pretty quick. 
Um, the, the category that I have for this game is just, like, find the sorcerer, kill the sorcerer, and escape the dungeon. And, you know, like I said, it's... Uh, I wouldn't really be able to show that off just as a speedrun here, because it's too inconsistent. It's, like, so much RNG. But, yeah, um... This... You know, any game can be a speedrun if you want it to be, right? <laughs> That's so true. Um, and I, I don't have... There's no SRC page for uh, Jewel Thief, but I have run that in around two minutes as well. Um, I have a bot of it on my YouTube somewhere. There's no commentary or anything, but... There is evidence that I that I did it. That sounds interesting. And should we just like Google your handle to find your YouTube? Um, it's Rujasu55. Uh, the same as my Twitch handle is. Well, um, you've heard it here first, folks. Yep. Definitely, uh, definitely going to be the last uh, Searcher's Cave run here. Now, I haven't decided what I was going to dress as for Halloween tomorrow, but this Valkyrie character, I mean, she's really kind of, you know, like, I kind of, I'm inspired. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, I can see that, like, <laughs> you know, pretty cool. And all of my friends would definitely recognize who I was. Yeah, you know that's <laughs> that, that's kind of how it is when you when you're into like really weird and obscure stuff like this. It's like, oh, I could go as this character as for Halloween, but nobody would get it. I mean, it would be a cool costume anyway, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter if, uh, if people actually know what you are. As long as I look cool and I'm holding a sword, nobody would need to know. Yeah, I mean, if somebody gives you a hard time about it, just like, look, I have a sword, don't argue with me. I'm a generic Valkyrie, no, of course I'm not playing the main character from a Windows 3.1 game, no, this is just my... RPG Valkyrie costume. <laughs> Alright, so you see the, the bar was getting in the red there. Our morale was running out. People were starting to desert. So I just barely got out of there with 500 points. Man. But, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that was Sorcerer's Cave. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I'm going to be showing off one more game here. Um, and this is a fantastic game with absolutely no flaws, and it is called Cheese in Space. So, here we go. Oh, I'm so excited already. It is a wonderful game. I have to turn off the music here because it's like that MIDI music that uh, would get our bod muted because it would definitely like violate the MCA. But yeah, um, this is Cheese in Space. It is, you may not have heard of it, but it is the perfect game. Uh, and we're going to get started here. So yeah, um, it's Cheese and it's in space. What more could you want from a video game? I can't think of a single thing. Maybe fishing, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, there are no monsters in this game, only monsters. Uh, we will have to take on all of this cheese, mano a romano. Uh, the fete of the universe is at stake here, so you won't want to swiss a minute of the action. But we're going to kick some Asiago, we're going to shred the competition, and maybe even cream them. Um, this is a game I played when I, I was a kid, and it is near and dear to my heart. Uh, it always makes me feel cheddar when I've been feeling blue. 
It's like a Monterey of sunshine on a Colby rainy day. Uh, I you should just play it every morning for a dairy dose, dairy dose of good vibes. Um, you know, to help you really relieve in yourself and be ready to whiz through the day. Now, you may be watching this and thinking, this game is not so hard to beat. Um, and actually, I have already made it halfway through the game, but I do need to stay focused just in case. So. Okay, I think maybe I've milked these puns for all they're worth. <laughs> I'm I'm speechless. <laughs> um. So yeah, this is the first level of uh, cheese in space. Um, we're almost through the first level here. Be just another little bit here, and we'll get um a cutscene, I guess. Now, do you write down all those puns? Or, like, how long did you practice that? I'm, like, I'm so... I'm impressed. I'm speechless. Like, no <laughs> notes. <laughs> like... Uh, I, I, I wrote them down. I... I, 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 I was... Uh, I was cheating off a, uh, you know... Uh... But to be sniping cheese while reading the puns! Like, don't <laughs> undersell yourself! Um, so we're gonna move on to level two here. Uh, level 2 is just as difficult and challenging as level 1 was. Um, we have more cheese, and now we have some mushrooms and uh, some other stuff. And it's all still in space. Um, but, you know, we're just trying to get as high a score here as we can by clicking on these cheese icons. Um, but yeah, this game has, uh, has two levels, and, you know, it only has two levels, but with, you know, levels as, uh, complex and challenging as this, like, w why would you need more than two? This no, is this all the is... gameplay you need. I mean, this is, uh, like, uh, up there with those $70 Switch games. This is equivalent amount of content. Oh, I, I would pay upwards of $100 for this. Like, <laughs> But this game is actually also 100% free, if you can believe that. I, I also cannot speak for how well this game will run on modern systems. I have only tr ever tried to run this on Windows 3.1. Um... I do kind of wonder, now that I'm saying this, how this would, uh, you know, how a newer system would react to cheese in space, but uh, feel free to try that for yourself. I'm definitely going to want to destroy the cheese next time I'm playing some computer games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so... The ending is going to be coming up pretty soon here. So, alright. So, to beat the game here, I am going to have to press shift. Uh, this is very, very difficult strat here. Um, shift. I did it. And we can press control to view the ending. Um, so, that is time. Uh, this has been Cheese in Space. Um, I hope you all enjoyed Bees in Space, as well as these other games that I got to show off. Um, yeah. Um, thank you for watching this. <laughs> thank you for playing. Oh, I really enjoyed those games. That was such a great showcase. Um, and amazing to hear that we too could enjoy these absolute masterpieces of games. Um, just right on my old computer that I have sitting around since 1995. Um, thank you again so much for showing these off for us. Any parting words for um, folks interested in getting into the shareware community? Um, you know, I think the best way to get into shareware is 
honestly, just like, you know, you can go on like archive.org or if you have some old shareware CD lying around and you just want to like see what's on there, just kind of go through and like see what interesting stuff you can find because there's so many like forgotten gems and also things like cheese in space. And I really just enjoy like kind of going through and seeing some of this stuff that, you know, people forgot about. Um, so, yeah. Definitely. And I don't mean to sound too cheesy, but I had a great time with you this afternoon, Alice. <laughs> Folks, we're just going to go take a quick break to get set up for the next game. As we were talking about before, we got Quest for Glory 1 coming up um, in about an hour. But before that, up next, we're going to enjoy some Ultimate Doom. So y'all don't go anywhere um, and we'll see you real soon.